Hi everyone, welcome to another Doug's Lab video. In this video, we'll be making anhydrous magnesium sulfate for use as a desiccant in the laboratory. It's very useful since every molecule of magnesium sulfate contains seven molecules of water locked in its crystal of hydration. So we'll be able to dry things out. In fact, it will absorb 51% of its own weight in water once it's made anhydrous. Making it anhydrous is a very easy task. You'll notice that we're in my kitchen and not in the laboratory. And that's because I'm doing this on a fairly large scale and I don't have a laboratory oven big enough to accommodate these large baking pans, which is what we'll use to dehydrate the magnesium sulfate. To buy it yourself, it's pretty easy. It's just Epsom salts. You go to the store, um, magnesium sulfate USP. This is, of course, the hydrated version, uh, magnesium sulfate 7H2O. It comes as a free flowing sort of granular crystalline salt. And all we're going to do is just pour it onto these baking pans and stick it in the oven. At about 150 Celsius, it loses six of those molecules of water going down to the monohydrate, and above 200 Celsius, the monohydrate finally dehydrates to the anhydrous form, which is what we're after. Now during this process, the magnesium sulfate will melt into its own water of crystallization, so we're gonna need a pan that has lip to the edge of it. Also, when it finally does become anhydrous, that melt will sort of turn to a glassy solid, which will be somewhat porous, but also very, very tenacious when it comes to sticking to glassware. So if you use a glass pan, it becomes very difficult to get it off. You might scratch your pan trying to do it. I prefer using metal pans with a nonstick coating because you could flex the metal pan a little bit, which will crack the product off at the end. So what we're going to do is simply open this and spread it out evenly onto the pan. Give you a closer look of the crystal structure. And you can see they're very large crystals. Not sure what shape that is, but they're very clear, very large crystals. So there we go, we've got the magnesium sulfate spread evenly across those pans. This was a 2.72 kilogram package. It's gonna make quite a lot of desiccant. For me, almost a lifetime supply. That'll be very nice. So all we need to do is turn the oven on and put it in there. Now for you folks living in the United States, a good temperature would be 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Four hundred and fifty degrees Fahrenheit, and then we're simply going to pop these in. Just like that, we'll close the oven and we'll come check on this in about an hour. We are now about 20 minutes in. The oven has reached temperature, and uh, we will now open this up and see what's going on inside. You hear that wonderful sizzling noise? I can't get much closer, the camera lens will fog up, but you can see that the tray is melting. Well, the magnesium sulfate in the tray is melting, I should say and it's losing quite a bit of water. It's only a matter of time before all of the water will be lost. There'll be no more sizzling and we can take it out. So now it's been an hour and we're gonna up the temperature to 500. Make sure everything is absolutely dry 
and wait one more hour. Then we'll come back and crack it out of the pan. The magnesium sulfate has now been at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for another hour. For a total of two hours of heating, one hour first at 450 and the second hour at 500. And we'll now begin the process of recovering the anhydrous magnesium sulfate from the trays. So first we'll turn the oven off. And I will get them out. Five hundred degrees, they're pretty hot even through the oven mitt. So you can see now that the magnesium sulfate has turned hard and crunchy and fairly easily broken. At this point, it's only a matter of bending the tray a little bit to crack the pieces off the bottom and then loading them into this jar I have here, which I'll be using to store the magnesium sulfate in. It's a one gallon glass jar with an airtight snap down lid. The trick is to get underneath the main piece. There we go. So you can see it pops right off the pan pretty easily. So I'll just break these chunks up a little bit and throw them into the jar, and the jar can be shaken to break them down further into a powder. They're fairly easily broken. And the powder is typically more useful as a desiccant, but sometimes chunks are useful as well, so I tend to leave it as a chunky sort of solid mass. And as long as it's stored in an airtight container, your desiccant will remain very dry for a long time. And I'm going to use this in many upcoming experiments. So this is kind of important, and I now have quite a lot of it. And there we have it. Approximately 1.3 kilograms of still pretty hot anhydrous magnesium sulfate lumps. Straight for use as a desiccant. They break up so easily that a vigorous shake of the jar is really all that's needed to make a significant amount of powder. And it's just a matter of maybe putting a sieve over the top of this when you shake it out if you really want powder. If not, the lumps are, are broken up easily enough for it not to really be a problem. And there we go, one jar of magnesium sulfate desiccant. Thanks for watching.